Okay, I think I'm going to go ahead and get started. I know we've got, um, you know, over 30 people here. Most of the students, if not all, are here. I know our panelists are here. And so um, we'll go ahead and get started. And I know there's some things going on in the back end. Um, but my name is Renee Quinn. Yeah. I am with the Foundation for Metro West. I want to welcome you all to our Hopkinton Youth and Philanthropy Grant Defense presentation. Um, a special welcome to our parents, our guardians, our family members, and friends who are experiencing youth and philanthropy for the very first time tonight. Um, although we're virtual, um, we are taking advantage of the technology. We've become pros, I hope, by now. Um, and so we look forward to a really great presentation from our students. And um, we also have some fabulous panelists here, all you know, pros, again, with youth and philanthropy. Um, Megan Bransfield is here. She's on the back end with the foundation, a colleague of mine at the Foundation for Metro West. And then we have Allison Roach, which many of you know, the instructor of the program. And then a special um, shout out to Sheree Ravi, who is the instructor's assistant with Allison. And so I'll pass it off to Allison at some point here and she'll be able to say hello. But I wanted to give everyone a rundown of what this evening will look like before I go ahead and introduce our panelists. Um, and then have Allison say a few words. So tonight is really all about the students and their experience and walking us through what youth and philanthropy has looked like for them over the last 17 weeks, and then diving deeper into the nonprofit organizations that they have evaluated, have visited, um, and then ultimately are recommending um, to us for funding uh, through the youth and philanthropy program. A couple of notes um, quickly, just you know, housekeeping. So we will be moving students in and out of the screen. We've done this in the past and it's worked very well to be able to focus and listen to the students that are actually presenting. So right now, the platform that we're using is the webinar version. So I know we had a few questions in the chat. Um, if you are not a host or a panelist, you cannot see your screen and we cannot hear your mic as well. Um, however, you are able to use the chat function to send us messages, but then Megan on the back back end, we'll be able to move students over to panelists so that they're able to communicate to all of us and to present so we, we can see them. Um, this will be recorded. We like to record this so that we can share it with those who are unable to join us. And then at the very end, once the students are done presenting, at that point, we will turn it over to our panelists who will ask the students questions um, about their decision making process. Were they thoughtful? Um, did they ask the right questions to the nonprofits? Um, what did they learn through this process? What ultimately brought them to the decisions that they're, you know, presenting tonight? And so really diving deeper into um, you know, just things that they may not have answered during the presentations or presentation or things that we may be curious about. But what I really want to emphasize in this portion is that our panelists will ask some questions, but then we will open it up to the audience, um, audience meaning parents, guardians, friends out there that, uh, you know, have had burning questions throughout the last 17 weeks that maybe your student did not answer for you on the car ride home or at the dinner table. And so now is your chance to ask the questions um, about the program and really to open it up to conversation um, amongst the students. So again, if you have any questions, any concerns, we'll be monitoring the chat during the presentation. Um, and then I think that's the only way that we can communicate. So we'll just keep it at that, the chat for now. So what I would like to do is introduce our panelists this evening, and then I will turn it over to Allison to kick things off. Um, so Megan, if you wouldn't mind bringing over Cimarron, Chris, uh, Melissa and Susan, and you can bring the, them over so they can say hello. I know we'll have a few faces on the screen at that point. But while Megan is doing that, um, I just want to acknowledge, you know, these individuals, whether they are um, trustees of the foundation or funding partners for the Hopkinton Youth and Philanthropy Program, um, they all are true um, cheerleaders of the youth and philanthropy program across the community in a variety of different ways. Um, Simran Carr, um, who is on uh, tonight as a panelist, is one of our youth and philanthropy junior board members. So has done the program in the past, knows all about, um, you know, the experience, and I think will be really um, prepared to ask some really good questions. Chris Alessandro and Melissa Ruff, I believe Melissa, I can't see her screen. Oh, good. Oh, wait, let me see. Is she on here yet, Megan? 
Oh, keep going down. Okay. Okay. Good. Um, so Melissa and Chris She's coming over. She's okay. 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 Good. Um, so Melissa and Chris are with the Hopkins Chain Country Club Charitable Foundation. And the Hopkins Chain Country Club Charitable Foundation is our lead funder for the Hopkins Chain Youth and Philanthropy Program. So this program would not be possible without their support. And we're really thankful that they're joining us tonight um, on the panel. But then also to say a few words about the Hopkins Chain Country Club Charitable Foundation and why they support the Youth and Philanthropy Program. And we'll get to that in a minute. And then finally, we have Susan Kavugian. Susan is has been a champion for the Youth and Philanthropy Program at the Foundation for many years. Um, as a trustee of the Foundation for Metro West, serves as our distribution committee chair, and has been involved with the Foundation for a number of years. And so we're really thankful that Susan is offering up her time tonight to hear from our students in the Hopkinton Program. So at this point, Chris, I wanted to pass it off to you if you just wanted to say a few words to welcome everyone before I pass it off to Allison um, on behalf of the Charitable Foundation. Sure, thank you, Renee. Really appreciate you inviting us, Melissa and myself, to the meeting tonight. And congratulations to all the students. So I represent, uh, Melissa and I represent the Hopkinton Country Club Charitable Foundation. We've had a relationship with Foundation for Metro West and specifically the Youth and Philanthropy in Hopkinton. Uh, we just finished our sixth year and we're, we're gonna be moving into the next phase pretty soon. And we're real proud. This is one of the proudest events and things that we do as an organization. And we're glad to, glad to participate and glad to get philanthropy into the minds and bodies and souls of the youth of our, uh, use of our community. So thank you for having us and congratulations to all of you that have done so much work so far. Awesome. Thank you so much, Chris. And so at this point, I would love to pass it off to Allison, if you'd like to say a few words and then we can get started with the um, presentation. And again, we'll open it up to questions at the end and I'll monitor that conversation as we go along. So Allison, I'll pass it off to you. Sure, so I've had the privilege of being the instructor here in Hoppington for this is my fourth year and I will say that this has been a fantastic group of students um, and they have been very strongly led by um, both Spencer Horgan and Peter Morgan. Those two are the, actually the ones who are gonna kick us off with the introduction and sort of their process and how they started off with the program. Um, and then they will sort of lead us through and, and introduce the, the folks that come after them. But I will say that they have done a tremendous job and we've been lucky to be in person most of this time. Um, it was only in, uh, up till last week where we had to go remote. So um, I will say we, we were very lucky in that way, but it caused some challenges at this point in the game. So I'm ho I'm happy to say they've been able to, to work through those challenges and we're they're ready to go tonight. So without further ado, I'm gonna turn things over to Spencer. So at this point, as we start the presentation, Megan will be bringing people over and moving people out. So there's usually a little bit of an awkward pause in between. And so Megan, I'll let you work your magic and bring everyone over. Am I ready to get started? All right, awesome. So I'm Spencer Horgan. As uh, Miss Roach introduced me, I'm one of our two co-chairs for our uh, Youth and Philanthropy Group. Um, so to start off this presentation, um, I'm just going to give a brief background into our um, just our group and our initial process uh, and just some general stuff like that. Um, but about our group, real quick. So yeah, the uh, Youth and Philanthropy Group brought together high schoolers from the Metro West community. Um, all interested in philanthropy and how we can give back to our community. And um, with that, we were given an incredible opportunity of um, $10,000, we have two grants of $5,000 to get the two nonprofit organizations. So our assignment was to, um, to look through uh, the five organizations uh, that were proposed to us and, and decide to, um, to give grants to. Um, so on, uh, here on the slide, uh, how we acted effectively. Um, so a lot of research went into this. This is the bulk of our, our process. As Ms. Roach said, again, luckily we we're in person. So we were able to interact with each other. Um, once a week, we were able to be with each other and talk. And there was a lot of discussion going into these organizations in the beginning, researching. And through, through this research, we were able to learn about philanthropy and learn how these grants worked. Uh, so it was a really great process of getting to know each other. Uh, a lot of people that we didn't know uh, initially and getting to know the whole philanthropy process. 
And obviously with this, with having to, um, you know, cancel out three of the organizations we were given, it did create some challenges because, you know, with five great organizations, it created a very difficult decision. So again, this, um, but again, challenges like this really are like only helped us and, and helped us learn. So that covers that. All right. Um, yeah. So our decision making process. Um, so again, as I just said, with the five organizations, uh, we needed to down narrow down to four because uh, we to do our site visits. We had to um, visit four of them, um, which unfortunately uh, were virtual instead of um, instead of in person. But the site visit still went well. Once we decided on our four to visit, we. Um, Went uh, well, sorry about this. Uh, went all on, on Zoom and um, and learned about all the all the different uh, organizations. And from there, uh, we had to come to our final decision. We had obviously four, five um, very good uh, organizations to choose from. So uh, led us to our final discussions. We had to um, carefully brainstorm with each other to uh, to reach our consensus. So yeah, that's just um, some general information about our our process, and that covers that. Hi guys, so my name is Peter Morganelli. I'm the other co-chair for the uh, YIP Club. And the first thing we're gonna be talking about is our fundraising process. So initially we struggled um, with making the uh, donations. We had a bit of trouble at the start with just like getting the ball rolling. But after our first kind of generous donation, I came up with an idea of every student in the club to contact a family member on the spot. And luckily, because of this strategy, we were able to spark a donation chain, which allowed us to make over um, $1,000 in only one and a half weeks, which was solely through the, the online donation. So I'm, I'm really thankful for that. And I remember around the time of Thanksgiving, we kind of were thinking about doing some sort of other uh, donation strategies, but with this, we had a lot of su success. So I'm very thankful for that. So now let's talk about how we connected uh, throughout the club. So thankfully, um, Shreya's job initially was to organize the icebreakers. And so we did this every single meeting and this assisted with our comfort level and our increased group participation in the discussion. We also did some activities called Round Robin and Rose Thornbud. So Round Robin was where we went into a circle and every person discussed their thoughts on what we uh, were talking about. And that also sparked more discussions. So uh, we also did Rose Thornbud, which was one good, one bad, and one question where we went around on posters and talked about the grants we were discussing. And this also sparked more discussion and really just helped us come together as a group. So now I'm gonna pass it on to Isaiah who will discuss our first grant, which is Salvation Army. Uh, thanks, Peter. So basically, the Salvation Army was one of the grants that weren't chosen. They are basically a well-known profit organization that operates as a legal entity with other branches providing services to those in need. Uh, the Salvation Army is known to do a lot of good work and has a good reputation, but and they have an after-school program in Waltham, Massachusetts, meant to serve children ages 6 to 14, mainly from a single-parent household. And their main goal with the money is to provide services for those in need, such as summer camps, Christmas gifts for the needy, tutoring and recreational activities. And in their grant, it wasn't clear where the money would specifically be going to, but it can be assumed that the money would be for one of their services or for an after school program for the children. And now I'm gonna hand it off to Akash. 
Um, although the Salvation Army is a thorough organization, there were some factors we considered for our decision. The Salvation Army is very well known across the country and already has many followers. We believe it will be better to fund lesser known organizations. The tour was a little unprepared, unorganized, and a bit rushed. This played a little factor in our decision-making process. Their budget it is $763,315 of both income and expenses. So the surplus or deficit of the budget is exactly zero. They spend money for more for many necessities to function the organization, but the increased income to counterposes the expenses. Now I'll turn I'll turn things over to Aiden, Kyle, and Barry. Megan, you're doing a great job of moving people in and out. <laughs> Just want to confirm who I'm moving in because those names didn't match what I thought was coming in. So I just want to make sure I know who's speaking next and then I'll just go from there. Thank you for raising your hand. Christina, you are okay. Is it Christina and Jack who are coming in? So the second grant we had to review was the HCA, and this program was targeted toward youth ages 18 to 22 who had special needs, and the program was mostly focused um, on helping them explore and express emotions through art in forms of dancing, painting, music, and other things like that. This program helped them provide creative skills, socialization, and it also created an environment where self-awareness and self-advocacy were really being worked on and grown. The HCA is located in Hopkinton, Massachusetts, and the program would be in collaboration with many local schools. The total cost of the program was $6,650, which we would be donating 5,000 to. And now I'm gonna pass it on to Jack. So we chose not to fund the HCA for three main reasons. Um, the first one was we did not have a site visit for this nonprofit. And that was because mostly everyone in youth and philanthropy was familiar with the HCA. Um, we thought it was a good cause still, but we thought there are also many other causes that needed the money more or um, had a more necessary cause. And we didn't think this nonprofit would reach as many people as some of the other ones would have. So those are, those are the three reasons we chose not to fund it. I'm not gonna pass things off to Afnan. And uh, while Megan is moving in Afnan, I'll just speak on, the fa on Afnan's behalf. He has been ill. Um, and so as you can see, there's not much text here, but he will be able to share some thoughts that the group had about out Metro West in their discussions. Um, but these are one of those challenges that they were able to rise to and overcome. So without further ado, I'll let Afnan have the stage. Uh, yes. Um, so uh, hello everyone, I'm Afnan. Uh, as Ms. Roach said, I have unfortunately tested, uh, sorry, my bad, I forgot to start my video. Uh, Okay, hello. Uh, so as Ms. Roach said, I unfortunately have been ill. I tested positive for COVID-19 and I've been isolating. So I haven't been able to stay on the same page with the group uh, lately. And when it comes to preparing the presentation, although I think the rest of them from what I've seen so far did an amazing job. Um, so for El Metro West, uh, it's basically their goal as a nonprofit is to create a kind of safe space for local LGBT youth in, uh, the, met in the Metro West community. Um, and, you know, kind of lead the discussion and, and kind of, uh, you know, let them engage with each other and uh, just have kind of a, a good constructive, hopefully, time, which is a great cause, obviously. Um, most of these are great causes. Um, uh, um, ultimately, the, the reason we ended up not choosing them, however, was because uh, we noticed in the grant proposal that they offered us, they, um, it seemed like a uh, a really substantial amount of the funding would be going to like, you know, the staff rather than the, the people they're actually catering to. Like there, there's a lot of stuff in the, in the 
in the grant proposal, we we're talking about, you know, staff, like mon money going towards food for staff, staff bonding activities, that kind of thing. And we just, we weren't super down with that, I guess, in our discussion. Um, we were just kind of confused about that. And in their presentation that they had with us, they did sort of clear it up a bit. They kind of put a special emphasis on how uh, important uh, staff bonding is in order to create a better safe space for the youth in the area that they're catering to, which was all well and good. But later on in that same meeting, they mentioned they have three staff members. Um, so we, we kind of just got together again and talked about it and like, you know, if our, if our, are we, do we really want to send all this, this $5,000 grant towards three people or, or maybe not towards three people, but a big amount of it would be going, would be catered to these three people. Is that the best idea? We kind of, we kind of didn't think so. Uh, that was our consensus as a group. And that's why out Metro West was unfortunately not one of the, one of the ones we, um, we uh, considered for funding. Hi hey guys, how you doing? Uh, I'm Aiden, I'll be talking about um, REACH. Um, so REACH is a program uh, located in Waltham, Mass, who serves uh, the surrounding towns specifically. Um, well, they serve 8,000 households uh, and they, their target is uh, domestic abuse victims and their mission is to uh, serve is to serve victims of domestic abuse, as I said, and provide a safe community location to foster healthy relationships. Um, so they provide a hotline, a shelter, and an online chat room specifically targeted to youth uh, to prevent domestic abuse. So now I'll pass over to Kyle to speak a little more on that. All right, hi, I'm Kyle. So basically one of the big things that they outline when we talk to them was their PAVE program, which is formed, it stands for Peers Against Violence Educators, and it's formed as an after-school club. So they focus it at Waltham High, and they, like, talk to the students, and they, like, teach them how to recognize signs of violence in their peers and just, like, how to help them with that. So they'll discuss their issues, but they're not just limited to, like, domestic violence. They can come from any sort of trauma they may have, like gender issues, communication, bystander intervention, social media influence, and consent. So after these students go through these programs at their school, they then become like leaders of the club and will facilitate activities to like spread the word almost at their school. And they become advocates for the healthy relationships that they can form. And so they uh, mentioned in their grant that they had took a hit from COVID and their membership was lacking. So it was really important for them to like start building that back up because a lot of their leaders had graduated and then COVID hit and it was hard for them to keep the membership up during that time. So then here we have the budget and just looking at this, we can see that they were operating at a net loss of around 200,000. And that was just more reason for us to fund them because it was clearly a need. So now I'll pass it over to Ali. Okay, so one of the main reasons we chose uh, REACH for funding is um, their presentation or their site visit really um, stood out to us. And um, it was a really thought out, thorough presentation. Um, it was very interactive and they um, even started the presentation by kind of grounding us and kind of like, um, you know, asking us where we were at and like communicating through the chat. Um, and also addressing that it was a tough subject matter and like if we needed to turn our cameras off or anything like that. And I think um, after discussing that, that kind of solidified um, with all of us that, you know, these uh, staff were like really passionate and committed to what the, they were doing. And, um, you know, it's not a subject matter that should be taken lightly and they definitely didn't take it lightly. 
Um, another concern of ours um, on the grant is that the members of the PAVE Club, um, you know, if it was an after school club, like what um, kind of commitment they would, um, you know, be able to have. But um, they're qualified leaders. They actually have to go through an application process for the after school club. Um, so that also uh, influenced our decision making. Um, and then the last thing is obviously all of these organizations are important to us and these are all important issues, but I think um, this issue in particular really uh, resonated with a lot of us. Um, national research shows that one out of every three teens report having peers who have experienced dating abuse and one in three teens also experience some form of physical, sexual or verbal abuse. So um, those were our reasons for funding. I'm now gonna give it uh, to Joe, who's gonna talk about um, what we liked about YIP. Allison, I'm going to jump in here just to confirm. We're, we still need to talk about Circle of Hope. Is that correct? Yes, Anna and Bella should be uh, speaking about that. Great. In just a moment. I'm thinking Megan's moving them in now. She probably is. I just wanted to confirm that to make sure <laughs> yes. that the slides are correct. Thank Hi. you. They're all coming, just little technical difficulties. Okay, there I go. All right, so Circle of Hope is an organization that serves individuals of all walks of life experiencing homelessness in the Metro West area. The organization helps to provide daily necessities such as personal hygiene items and clothing to individuals involved. The Get Set program is a branch of Circle of Hope, which aims to provide homeless college students attending Framingham State University and Mass Bay Community College with daily essentials so that they can spend more time focusing on their education and futures past graduation. With this program in operation, students affected receive items such as winter jackets, toiletries, shoes, and blankets. Currently, the Get Set program is helping 300 plus individuals, allowing them to focus on their education and futures while receiving help from Circle of Hope. The program aims to help people in times of need so that their education can receive its fullest attention without having to worry about basic necessities. And now I'll be passing it on to Anna. We selected Circle of Hope as one of the grant recipients because of its distinctive and inspiring cause. During their presentation, we were able to hear more about the struggles of college students in poverty, a topic we weren't as knowledgeable about prior. We could see the clear rise in the program's constituents since the pandemic started, highlighting the increase in homelessness and impoverishment during the past two years. We were also able to see the undoubtable differences Circle of Hope has made in these students' lives had witnessed the obvious care and enthusiasm their patrons have for the program. I think we'll be passing it over for, to, to Joe now. Or... Um, we should be on slide. It's the third to last one. Our first conclusion slide. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Uh, what did I like, or what did we like most about you? Well, first off, it gave us insight into issues across the Metro West that we may not, uh, think about, uh, normally, you know, uh, out Metro West, especially, you know, um, domestic abuse. 
Uh, also, it helped us build our leadership skills. Um, whether we had an actual leadership skill like uh, Peter as co-chair, uh, we were all given opportunities to participate and lead in discussions. And you know, uh, this entailed showing uh, and sharing opinions, um, discussing grants, as well as being separated into groups and presenting our information to the rest of the group. And uh, last, it showed the importance of working together and hearing everybody else's voice. And, um, you know, tying it back to sharing opinions, we all had our own thoughts and um, we had to share them to come to the decisions that we did. And not everyone agreed on everything. And that was a good thing because it allowed us to have in-depth conversations and uh, share our stances with each other. And uh, I'll be passing it on to Taylor. I'm going to be discussing the lessons we learned from YIP. So the first thing is we learned how to review and examine proposals. A large part of our time at YIP was reading the grant proposals and the organizations had to offer. We learned the importance of looking into the proposals and reading the goals of the organization as well as the financial statements. And we sort of understood the structure of the organization as well. And from this, we were able to create questions and narrow choices. Secondly, we understood the impact of the organizations in the community. Many of the organizations we discussed were new to us, and by reading the proposals and listening to the representatives of each organization, it was interesting to see how they were bettering our community. Each organization had different goals they wanted to accomplish, and we were able to learn the impact of each. That is why we took time to examine the grants to fully understand the goals and impacts. Lastly, we learned um, how our impact of could our impact um, in the community could through our decision. So over the past few months, we spent time and effort looking closely at each organization and deciding which ones we want to give the grant to. And in the end, we learned that our group is the one that's deciding how we want to help our community and our decision impacts our community greatly. And we came to understand how important our decision was. And overall, our group was working together to help our community. How do you plan to use what you learned in your future philanthropy efforts and beyond? Uh, first up, uh, checking the fine print. And what I mean by that is to really do your research. Um, with so many details for each grant, sometimes we overlooked uh, some things. And you know, an example of that is where the money's actually going. Um, so yeah. Uh, and then next, working, communicating with new people. We all came from different schools. Uh, most of us were uh, complete strangers uh, with a couple exceptions. And uh, being able to work together with somebody who you don't know is a, a great skill to have. And, and that's exactly what we did. And uh, finally, agree to disagree. And uh, kind, kind of tying this back to what I said earlier, everyone had different opinions and different views. And we didn't all get along, um, or we all, we all got along. We didn't all agree on, um, on certain topics, you know, we had different grants that we wanted to um, choose and we discussed and we uh, shared our opinions with each other, which is, uh, you know, really important. And that's definitely a very important skill to have, um, you know, being able to talk and, and um, share your thoughts with other people. Um, yeah, so uh, I believe that's our last slide. That is correct. That is the last slide. So what I'm going to do now, thank you so much. Um, round of applause. We'll bring everyone in. But Megan, um, what I'm thinking is we'll bring all of the students over and we'll I'll stop sharing my screen so that we can see everyone's faces. We'll have our panelists take their cameras or bring their cameras back on and then um, and we'll pass it off to them. So I'll wait till all the students are over to get things going.
Everyone's good, Megan? Awesome. Great. Well, again, congratulations. I think that was a wonderful presentation. And so I'm going to pass it off now to our panelists. And I might start with Chris, um, if he would like to go first. And then for our other panelists, please feel free to raise your hand, just speak up. Um, you know, I think we'll be, manage it just fine and, you know, making sure that everyone um, has the tools to raise their hand. So Chris, I'll pass it off to you for the first question. Thank you, Renee, and congratulations to all, all of the YIP students. You guys uh, did a great job. It's a great program. As uh, I said before, you know, the Hopkinton Country Club Charitable Foundation is very proud to be involved in this. You know, we, uh, we as an organization, as a philanthropic organization, do the same exact thing that you guys do. We get grants from the outside world. We have to discuss them, process them, prioritize them. So what you did actually is exactly the same thing that we and other philanthropic organizations do. So, you know, you learn more than just the fundamentals. You did quite a bit of work. And uh, you also learned that there's quite a bit of need right in our backyard. You know, we were pretty blessed to have what we have here in Hopkinton, the surrounding areas, but there's a lot of people that need a lot of help too. So I think you learned quite a bit. So. You know, one of the aspects of the youth and philanthropy program uh, that I really love is that you are all required to work in a democratic fashion. You alluded to that in some of your slides. And I have to assume, similar to how we work in our philanthropic foundation, that people have strong opinions, people believe things differently, and people have uh, uh, can have some uh, interesting opinions. So. I'm hoping you can maybe share with me how you worked in this democratic fashion and uh, if there is any conflict, how you, how you work through it to come to, uh, to, to come to different agreements. Hi, Chris. My name is Peter. I'm happy to answer this question. I'm one of the co-chairs, like I said before. And as a democratic system, I think um, that's a really interesting question. And being a co-chair, me and Spencer, we had a role was to play devil's advocate. And that was a really um, important role when Ms. Roach was describing the roles to us before we um, applied for the position. So I think the answer to this question is, we honestly, we, we had a friendly environment the whole time. I think that in our discussion, we had many different perspectives that were touched upon during our discussion and especially during our decision, I think it was important that we took the other side many times. And so I think we did a really nice job with that. I don't think there was really any problems with that at all. I'm sure Ms. Roach could agree or could um, add additional comments to that as well, but I think everyone just did a great job overall. That's great, thank you. So my name's Susan, even though it says Brian on my screen. Um, I had a quick question about site visits. Um, did you find them helpful? Did the site visits change your opinions about any of the organizations? Um, and how do you feel like the, the organizations answered you as, as students? Because I know in the past, um, some organizations or some of the students felt that they weren't um, taken seriously. Um, so I just wanted to get your impressions of your of how the site visits went and how it impacted your decisions. I can take this one. Uh, to the last part of your question about them taking us seriously, um, I think for the most part, uh, they definitely did. And the site visits, they went very well too, for the most part. Um, it was a great opportunity to meet the people that were you know, asking for the donations and see how passionate they were. And that to me was one of the, the best parts, seeing how passionate they were um, and how much effort they put into to their presentations. And a lot of them, as um, some of my peers have talked about, uh, they were like, they gave us a lot of information. And it was a great opportunity for us to ask questions too, because we had prepared a lot of questions for them and seeing how they answered them. Um, and what they had to say was really telling um, for if they deserved the, the money or not. So uh, I would say um, it was definitely a worthwhile thing to do. And that's probably where we learned the most about, um, about all these organizations. So, yeah. Great. Thank you. 
And I will add, if there are other students that would like to chime in for questions, we don't have to just take one response. I think, you know, we're open to many students answering one question. Just wanted to add that. I also wanted to say congratulations on your fundraising because sometimes that's the hardest part. Um, and I think it really helps you appreciate um, how far, how, how hard it is to work to, to make money and the impact that that money has on these organizations is, is significant. So congratulations on that. So well, I have a couple more questions too, if other uh, panelists uh, want to uh, catch their breath on it. But uh, so I have a, a couple of them. Um, I'll, I'll ask one now and I'll ask one a little bit later. So I know that it's, it's difficult when you have multiple grant requests because usually all of them are a good cause. You know, and there and many of them had sad stories associated with them. So it's, it's sometimes hard to to remove emotions from some of the decision. Um, I noticed that one of, the, uh, one of the grantees that didn't make the list was the HCA. And I'm just curious, uh, I'm not challenging the decision at all, but I'm just curious that uh, as HCA is literally right next door to um, the high school, I'm wondering if the, dis uh, if the decision was made purely objectively based upon the data that you had in front of you, or if there might've been um, um, some personal, um, for lack of a better term, because of its physical relationship to the school and the history with the school, if that may have played into some of the, uh, the decision not to include them. I'll, I'll gladly take this question. And that's a really interesting one because um, as we were deciding which site visits we wanted to do, we also had to eliminate one and HCA was one of them just because it was right next door. And um, what I was gonna say is because we didn't have the site visit, we kind of missed out on that um, aspect of their presentation and what they were offering to us. And so uh, I think it was purely because it, what, I, it wasn't because um, they weren't advocating for something good. Obviously, like you said, all the grants are a good cause and our job here at YEP is just to narrow it down to the ones that are the most needed in the community. And so I think the fact that we didn't have the site visit along, that, um, along with the fact that we had other grants that were advocating for possibly better causes like domestic violence or LGBTQ rights, possibly that over something that was just uh, a center for the arts. I don't think that Obviously their grant wasn't something that was bad. I just think that as a group, we just decided to miss out on the site visit. And with that, we missed um, some aspects of their presentation and what they were trying to offer to us. Thank you, Peter. It's not easy. I know that it's not easy to make the decisions, but it sounds like you put some pretty good thought into all of it. So thank you. So I, I had another question. Um, just looking at where we're at with COVID, um, were any of these organizations response to what's going on in the world with COVID? Did that impact your decision at all? Um, I know some organizations have seen a huge increase in their, their need because of COVID. And I don't, I don't know if, if you found that or if that didn't have any impact at all, potentially. I have something for this one. So just like with the uh, reach, one thing that was big for them was how much participation in their club pave had dropped because of COVID with going online for school for a lot of the last year and a half almost. And just I think that that had like taken a backseat since the club is hard to get into anyways with the ap whole application process. And then with COVID, it just wasn't at the front of people's mind. So I think we saw that like they really had a need to get that club going again. So especially since there was few participants. So I think that was big for us and choosing to support them. So I have a question. Hi, everybody. It's Melissa. Um, you love the program. 
And I guess I'm just curious, a uh, couple things. One, I know it's like what it's like to feel the connection with someone who's very passionate about the charity and how that can really draw you in. Um, you actually uh, referenced that. And, you know, when you go into each group, I'm wondering to what degree you, you know, initially just let them roll with it. Or if you go in with a bunch of questions and then, you know, they, they answer them and then you go back within a certain time frame with more questions or if you typically go to the site visit let them tell you what they're going to tell you and then go back with questions to each group like is that the definitely what you do do you always go back with more questions um with each one i could uh oh okay Ella, do you want to take it sure we, can, we both can i'll okay you can go first um, so Salvation Army was one of the first site visits that we did, and um, they didn't really have um, that much of a presentation other than a tour. So when we got there, they were like, you know, we'll take questions and, and just kind of do a back and forth. Um, and I think certain organizations had um, better presentations that because we uh, pre wrote out questions based on the grant that answered those questions and um, their organization, like uh, something like Reach was so thorough. Uh, we didn't really have that many questions at the end. Um, but um, in contrast, Out Metro West, um, you know, she kind of gave her presentation and then it kind of um, created more questions and then her responses to the questions created more questions. So it was definitely different for each site visit based on the grant and based on who was presenting and what the presentation looked like. Mm -hmm. And just to kind of follow up on that, I know you mentioned that you felt some of the money went a little bit too much to the staff. And that's a big deal for me when I'm trying to look at some of the organizations as part of the Hopkinton Country Club Charitable Foundation, really, you know, how their much effort they're going to, to get the best bang for their buck and really use the money wisely. And I'm wondering to what degree everyone was, I mean, I know you see the financials, you know, if, if you, were uncertain how the money was going to be exactly allocated if people were kind of promoting that in the groups that you did donate the money to like really how well they're spending their money if that was kind of one of the leading reasons um why you chose them if you felt that was one of the leading reasons why you chose them definitely i think one of the leading reasons why we uh were able to rule out out metro west is um with her with our site visit um it was made clear that the majority of the money was um, uh, staff bonding. And I think uh, we definitely were able to rule that out. But I think all of the organizations um, used uh, their money, uh, you know, pretty wisely. And we didn't really see any gaps or like um, places that we were concerned about. Um, definitely with COVID, um, with, you know, clubs being online or things being online, it was, uh, difficult to, um, like see where the funding was going, but I think reach in particular, their grant was really thorough with that. Um, so yeah, Peter, if you want to add on to that. Another thing I just wanted to remind everyone is, is that the site visits were all online. So I just wanted to make it clear that like when we were experiencing the site visits, we had two per meeting. So we split up the meeting um, We where we had five grants to start with. We had to eliminate one, which was HCA, like I said before, because it was right next door. And then we split up the four remaining grants into two different meetings, which were all online. And from those presentations, we got a better idea of where the money was going and how serious they were for accepting the grants. So it's not to say that I think some of the presentations could have been stronger. I think that we had a good mix of good and bad presentations. So I think that it was good for us to experience both of that. Uh, for example, Salvation Army, like Ali was saying, it was more of a tour than it was a presentation. And that was also our first site visit. So I think we were expecting more of them to tell us about, they were trying to convince us to pretty much donate to them. And it seemed like they were just kind of doing a tour of like what the kids were doing, uh, what they had in their unit and, and stuff like that. So I would say that that compared to something like Reach, they had interactive activities where everyone would answer questions in the chat or would think about questions on their own. I think that it definitely convinced us more 
to donate to them because they were more serious about the cause than it was for say other grants and presentations. That's great. Good. to check um simran did you want to ask any questions yeah um so first of all great presentation guys i feel like i was reliving like my own defense presentation from two years ago as part of hoppington yip um and as a board member it's just really great to see you guys starting to learn all those different experiences and skills which is definitely going to be useful um, so my question is related to the pandemic which we all know can be very unstable unpredictable totally out of our control so I was just wondering, how did the two organizations that you guys picked, which is Circle of Hope and Reach Beyond Domestic Violence, how do you think that those best demonstrate sustainability in a world that's like constantly changing due to the pandemic? Uh, I can take this one. Um, so uh, that was a great question, and um, and you're right. You know the pandemic is is very unpredictable. Um, you know you think you've beaten it, and then it comes right back up. And then uh, so, uh, but our main um, kind of motivating factors for picking uh, Circle of Hope and Reach Beyond Domestic Violence uh, beyond just the pandemic, those seem like the most kind of essential. Um, kind of essential needs providers in terms of their like what they do obviously all the causes for these organizations were good causes um and that 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 would never the cause aren't really a factor in our necessarily ruling things out but it does play a role um and uh circle of hope in particular uh you know providing essential needs food toiletries um you know sleeping bags that kind of thing to college students uh it's kind of i think personally i think uh, and it did touch on the pandemic a bit in its presentation as well. Uh, like they, uh, they're what they're providing is especially invaluable with you know the times we're living in and for you know more economically vulnerable people, uh, you, call, you know like college students, um, and uh, that did definitely played a role the, with the context we're in into you know what have picking those two organizations uh, reach beyond domestic violence as well. Although it did have, a, you know, it's in the name, it did have a focus on domestic violence, but it also, uh, you know, focused more on, focused a bit on providing those essential needs and that, uh, yeah, that was a motivating factor for us picking them. I got one last little softball question for uh, everyone. So, you know, the, the program, hopefully you get a lot out of the program and hopefully you'll see more to it than just not a nice little thing to put on your college resume, of course. And what we hope, you know, what we all hope, all of us that are in philanthropy is that, uh, that this program will teach you uh, about philanthropy and they'll be part of your lives moving forward. So I'm not sure if any of you had any experience before this, but can, can you talk to what you think you might do moving forward with philanthropy? Um, if you don't mind me giving my two cents, I'm sure we all have, uh, or not all of us, but I'm sure a lot of us have different answers for what we could say to this question, because, you know, it is a personal question. Um, like you said earlier, like, we, uh, you know, we do live in, in an area that we, we might consider to be, you know, privileged, you know, Metro West, the Metro West area. But like you said, there are people in our own backyard that need help uh, just the same. And uh, this, and me personally, this program kind of alerted me to that. You know, I I have it I have it good here, um, thanks to my family and how I was raised. But uh, uh, not everyone here is that fortunate, and um, I think this program kind of helped me be more aware of that moving forward. You know, beyond what we you know hear in the news from other parts of the world and and that kind of thing. Also, just to add on top of that, I know the question is very person specific. But I myself, along with my friend Joe Copeland, who is um, also in the club, we're pursuing a leadership club at MIT next month. And we're at that club, we're going to expand on our leadership and philanthropy qualities, along with um, 
a community service project that's implemented in the program as well. So I, I don't know what everyone else uh, has set up for their future. I'm sure we could go around and talk for hours about what we plan to do and to help the help make the world a better place. But I know we don't have time for that. And I, I think that everyone here has been set up for a bright future, thanks to Yip. And okay. I'll add one more thing uh, to speak on, um, on my behalf and on everybody else's. One of our um, icebreakers on the first day was um, we had a lot of different types of ways to give back, like um, things we think are important, like uh, ways in the environment, um, maybe again, like um, environment, gun violence, like all these different, um, these different ways people can help out. Like, what are we interested in? Everybody was divided up among these different groups, um, different ways. And everybody was really passionate, all their separate groups. Everybody was talking in their little corners, like, um, like, oh, like I'm like a show, like, like, there, like, uh, you know, all divided up. And it was really nice to see how divided everybody was, but how passionate um, everybody was all together. And it really just showed kind of like a summary of the group, how, again, how passionate everybody was and how interested. And again, that was a great start to, uh, to all of this. And it really just shows to answer your question that, yeah, everybody here um, is definitely, definitely has their own interests that are all really diverse. And I can, I can speak on behalf of everybody. I'm sure every single person here will continue in some sort of way to, to give back. Um, so yeah, that was a, a really special aspect of our, of our group. Well, I'm so glad to hear that. Just gonna say, I love the program and you know, we're big supporters of the program and you're all a very bright bunch of students. So we're happy that you're learning about how to really do this at this age. and really see the numbers and meet the people and know what it takes to kind of, you know, give back really, you know, you have to be a little bit careful, obviously, and figure out where the money's going to do the best. Yeah. And, and I think I'll just, one, oh, and just one last thing, Renee, then I'll finally shut up uh, you know, <laughs> in this, in this big complicated world of ours with a lot of things going on. It's pretty, it's pretty easy for all of us to think that, what we do can't really matter, can't really impact anything, but hopefully you'll find that what you do does matter and every little bit helps. So um, what you did here did make it, will make a difference to a lot of people. So it's very important. So thank you. Yeah, and I just, oh, okay. sorry, go ahead. I was just gonna say to what degree when it comes to actually giving the checks and everything, do the, is there um, other students involved in that part of it? I can answer that for you. Um, I'm assuming because all the students are brand new in here, so no one's done the program before, but um, we actually have a graduation ceremony at the end. So in two or three weeks, um, don't quote me on that. It's like, the, I think the last week in January, we'll bring all of the youth and philanthropy programs together and the nonprofit organizations will be present and then they'll be able to pass, like each program gets to hand the checks off to the nonprofit organizations. Right. Uh, now in the virtual world, that will look a little different, um, right. but we'll, um, you know, but it's the same sentiment. It's the same, you know, feeling. Great. It's online. Yeah. And the one thing I, I kept, and I'm sorry, I kept interrupting you, Melissa and Chris, when you were speaking, but I just wanted to follow up on Chris's question, because that's usually my question at the end too, is, you know, what are you going to do after this? And I always love to add a little like a to that question in that raise your hand. If like one of the five organizations you learned about today interests you in getting involved with, like, would you be interested in getting involved in one of the five? And it doesn't have to be the four site visits, but, um, do any of them, you know, would you intern with them or would you volunteer with them just knowing what you know now? You could just do a show of hands. And it's okay if you don't. I mean, maybe the five cause areas weren't your thing. That's great. I mean, that's what we like to see. That's the other part of this is like, how can we get you out into the community to learn more about these nonprofit organizations, volunteering with them? Because you, as you know, they have lean budgets. You know, anytime they can get support from volunteers is really important. Great. Um, so I do want to open it up. We always do this. And I know we're running short on time. I can't believe we went out. We never go over eight. I mean, this is such a deep conversation and a very rich conversation. So it's wonderful. But I do want to give um, 
friends, family members. Um, I know we have some Hopkinton Country Club Charitable Foundation like um, trustees on the call. Like if anyone would like to pose a question in the chat that has not been answered, um, please feel free to do that. We'll, you know, we'll give it 30 seconds if you'd like to share something. Because I don't want to let that pass us by. Particularly for um, parents and guardians. I know that sometimes they can't get the questions answered at home, but in a public forum, they can't. <laughs> Great, we have some nice comments from people. Thank you. Opportunity, great. Um, oh, so someone asked, you know, this is a great opportunity. Thank you. Like, are there internships posted? And we'll um, share that with the students. But we do try to um, share any internship opportunities that we receive from nonprofits. We pass those along to our YIP alums. So we have a newsletter that goes out twice a year for our alums, and we try to include any opportunities we receive. And we get a lot. Um, I know Megan could probably shake her head on that too. We get a lot of inquiries and our YIP alums are our, our, our go-to for opportunities. Okay, well, I think um, it's time to vote. So Susan, Simran, Chris, Melissa, um, you know, are we feeling good about their decisions? Do we feel like they were thoughtful, responsible, um, thorough in everything that they did to get to the two organizations that they would like to fund? So um, a show of hands, if you will, just raising them, using your emojis to say yay or nay to their decisions. Awesome. And Melissa, I think I see your hand on there. There it is. <laughs> Um, great. Awesome. Well, congratulations to our students. It looks like your grants have been approved formally. And so we can't thank you enough for all of the hard work that you put into this program, the Country Club Charitable Foundation for supporting us, to all the families um, on the call that have supported the program in one way or another through your students' fundraising efforts. Um, so thank you so much for that. And so we will see everyone. I know the students have another class um, in between the graduation ceremony, but we will see everyone at the graduation ceremony at the end of the month. And you will be joined with our other programs, Sudbury and Natick. And we have students represented from over 14 communities in the Metro West. So it's a really exciting night for us to show you that this community is not just, you know, the young people in the room, but all across the region. And so we look forward to seeing you there. So we'll hang tight here if you have any last minute questions, but if not, thanks for joining us and we'll see you soon. Congratulations.